Hey, what up folks? Welcome to the Impact Lounge. This is your boy BQ and this is part two of 10 ways that I would fix Impact Plus and Twitch and the monthly special. So it's not just 10 ways, it's actually 20. So if you missed part one, it's gonna be in the pinned comment of this video. Another thing that's gonna be in the pinned comments as well is the new Impact Lounge Podcast Network YouTube channel. So if you listen to the podcast and the interviews here on the channel, there's gonna be a specific new channel for those things in the future. So everything's not gonna be uploaded on there quite yet but it's coming in the future. So these are 10 more ways though that I would fix the Impact Plus and Twitch monthly specials. Now to be fair, the last two that we saw in December this past month, I actually thought were pretty good. The Motown Showdown and the No Surrender. I didn't have too many complaints with those. So I think they are making some adjustments on the fly, but I still have 10 more ways that I would fix the following shows. Also, in the description of this video, the number one way, the easiest way that you can support the Impact Lounge is to download the Fight app if you don't already have it and set up a profile. You don't, you don't need to buy anything, order anything on there. Just download the app, set up your profile. Helps the relationship with myself and the people over a fight. And it's a really super easy way to support the Impact Lounge. So if it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And much like last week's episode, I shouldn't say last week, I think I dropped a week before that, this is more of a podcast format than it is a slideshow or anything like that. It's a little more podcasty, but I'm also promoting what we're doing in 2020 with adding new podcasts to the channel, to the new channel, as a matter of fact, and anywhere you stream your podcast. So I'm going to shut up right now. Let's get into it. If you haven't checked out part one and don't know where I'm going with 10 ways to fix Impact Plus and Twitch specials, what I'm doing with this is just pointing out the fact that a couple years into these being a thing, they don't feel big, they don't feel special. Now, us hardcore fans, we watch them, we enjoy them, and that's one thing. But we want more eyes and we want more buzz around these shows. And there's different things holding them back. Sometimes it's just the marketing and promotion in general. Sometimes it's audio and video. And sometimes it has to do with attendance. So, not only have I already done 10 ways that I would fix Impact Plus and Twitch, here is 10 more ways that I would fix Impact Plus and Twitch. All right, and I'm gonna do this in no particular order, but number 10, you want to stick around to number 10 because that is the one that is going to do it, folks. I promise you, that is the biggest idea yet. But anyway, number one, instead of showing us the old matches, show us the best match from the last Impact Plus show. Now, I don't have a problem with the flashback here and there when you use it sporadically, just kind of sprinkle it on us. But instead of showing us one of these old matches that most people don't care about, why not show us Michael Elgin versus Eddie Edwards from Unbreakable, if that's the event that just happened, because that particular match was a damn classic, and they're probably gonna put a classic on at the pay-per-view as well. So then we're even further promoting the Hard to Kill pay-per-view. Now, don't show the match in its entirety, because we don't like that with the flashback, but show us the meat and potatoes of the match, but actually give us the best match that you felt we got. And then the next week, give us you know the second best match. And then the next two weeks, if you wanna do a couple flashbacks, whatever. But diversify the way that you wanna to try to get us subscribed to Impact Plus. And if you're trying to get more people to watch the monthly specials, then why not replace, oftentimes aren't really classic matches, they're just old matches, replace that with a match that you really felt at Impact Plus or the, the two matches that will really bring people in. Number two is gonna be along the same lines. So let's say the first week you just give us the best match from Impact Plus. How about the next week, put together a little highlight reel, whether it's Twitch or Impact Plus, whatever special, because we wanna promote Twitch a little bit better on the Impact Show too, not just Impact Plus. So why not give us a highlight reel, set it to music, set it to catchy music, whatever you have, you have connections to get royalty free music to put in the background and put a nice video package together of a lot of the bigger moments, the bigger moves, some of the finishes, just put together some, it can be 30 seconds long, it can be a minute long, hopefully it's not a minute long, because most people don't really like stepping away from the actual action for these flashbacks and these throwbacks and these old matches, you know, they wanna remain in the moment, so don't, don't push people away too much, but maybe 30, 45 second highlight reel set to music, that it's just different, it breaks up the show and gives us the people watching an opportunity to see some of the biggest moves and, and matches from these specials because 
As I said in the last upload, the most eyes are on the Impact Wrestling TV product, not the YouTube, not the Twitter, not anything like that. The TV product has the most eyes, so just change the way that you deliver the information. Number three is gonna be to do a better job of sending press releases out. Now I know that they send some out, but I've done this many times. Anytime Impact comes up with some kind of news, some big news, you know, someone's gonna be at a pay-per-view, maybe even a signing in a lot of cases, and even these shows, I'll Google them, and they don't pop up anywhere except for the Impact social channels. And this goes back to making your own news when there's not news to be talked about, when there's nothing to put out there. Make your own news and put that out there. And with these press releases, the thing is you can communicate a lot in a short amount of time because you're talking about words that someone's reading. They click a link and say, okay, Impact has this show. And you can put those call to actions in there that I talked about last time. You know, subscribe to Twitch. It's a, you know, it's a free show. It's a free app. You can put any kind of information you want in these press releases. Now, they do put a few out. I think e-wrestling, that, that site always carries them. There's, there's some sites that carry this stuff. But they should be going out to every wrestling site. Maybe they are. I'm going to say no, though, because if you can you can even go back to something like Marafuji showing up at Bound for Glory, which was supposed to be a big deal. Not a single wrestling site picked that up until about 48 hours later. And I know because I was Googling and I was looking and it was just the Impact channels. And when they post the clips on Twitter and on Facebook, how many times do you see people in the comments saying, oh, this is what TNA has come to now? Like so many people out there, whether it's the, and there's the Impact fans on there too, making similar comments to that but there's so many people whether it's the impact fan base the trolls or people who maybe they haven't you know followed the product because they didn't have channels for whatever reason and they're still in the dark on what the hell the twitch and impact plus shows are so wherever you can put that information out do that do not just rely on your social channels especially where you can do longer form content where you know if you're sending it to blog sites Whatever information you want to put out there, you can put there. Number four is, is going to be to run social media ads. If you have been on Facebook, just because you're a wrestling fan, you've seen WWE ads, like if they're going to be in your local area, you've seen Ring of Honor, you've seen NWA, you've, you've seen fucking MLW, but I've never not once seen an Impact Wrestling ad. And anytime that WWE comes here and does a show in St. Louis or Ring of Honor does a show close, I see it in my social channels. I see it on Facebook. I see ads being run saying that there's a show in the local area. And that's just a better way of promoting because the whole point of what I'm doing with these uploads here is that Twitch and Impact Plus with these shows, there's a multitude of different things that have to be fixed. And one of them is getting more butts in the seats. Some shows, like the No Surrender, had a great crowd. So not all the shows are dead or have few people. I mean, there's just some shows that are more successful than others. But you've become too reliant on social media to get that word out there. And if you're saying, hey, we're coming to your city and you're doing it on Twitter, you're, count you're relying on people from that city to see the tweet a lot of times. But you put a little bit of money into running a Facebook ad if you're doing a show in Oklahoma, run a Facebook ad in Oklahoma so that people see it. And I know it's not the case because I live in Illinois and Impact has done shows in Chicago and they've even done shows, I'm, I'm still fairly close to Indiana and other places that they've come. So the ads could still be, I, they could still reach me even though they're not my immediate area. Run some social media ads. I've never seen a single one from Impact Wrestling in any way, shape, or form. And even if you're not being target specific where someone lives, you can still run ads for Impact Plus and Twitch. And again, when you're using that kind of media, like Facebook, you can say anything you want on there. You can put any information. You're not limited to a tweet. Number five, promote it at the shows, at local shows before Impact comes to town. I went to a Warrior Wrestling show one time in Chicago. And there were people from Impact Wrestling there because Bound for Glory was coming. But there was no communication with the crowd. Hey, someone is here from Impact. When we walked through the door, there was no flyers being handed to us. Nothing like that. At the end of the show, when, you know, 
usually at the end, as you know, people have left by this point. I'm not saying everybody, but some people start filing out before the, the final match. Yes, Brian Cage did plug Bound for Glory. The match with Sammy Callahan wasn't even official yet, so he couldn't really make it official, but he kind of alluded to the fact. But that was the only mention of Bound for Glory. And at this Warrior Wrestling, Tessa Blanchard was there, obviously Brian Cage. There was actually several Impact Wrestling stars there. Michael Elgin was there. You could do a little bit better job of, hey, fans, because this was a packed house that I went to. You can do a better job of, hey, fans, Bound for Glory is going to be here. So when it comes to partnering with these indie promotions, now, I'm not there at all these shows, so maybe there is somebody there. Again, I'm going to say no. Or if there is, there is a better job of doing it. What would I do is when people walk through the door, I would put together flyers, and you can have a voucher on there for free food when you show up to the show. So if you show up to Motown Showdown, you bring a voucher, and for every seat that you purchase, you're getting a free drink and a free burger, whatever they have at the concession stand. Or you get a 10, 15, 20% off Impact Wrestling merchandise at the little shop Impact stand that they have there. So you can put little flyers together. You can just hand down a damn flyer when they walk through the door saying, hey, we're going to be here. Number six. Now, this is something when I came up with all these that they actually kind of started doing. Sign somebody from the show. Now, we've seen him sign AC Romero and we've seen him sign Larry D. I have a little more interest in Larry D than I do in AC Romero personally, but it's nothing against these guys. Sign some guys, because Larry D, I think, has been in, in you know wrestling 16, 17 years. Also sign some up-and-comers. Every time these shows, and I mean every time these shows air, you see people on Twitter saying, sign this guy, sign this guy, and they're usually pointing out guys who are clear-cut X-Division talents, up-and-comers, I mean, young guys, young dudes who can really move. The fans are even telling you Impact Wrestling, these are the guys we want to see on television. Well, obviously, we can't say, hey, sign somebody at every show, but if the people feel that there is an opportunity to see somebody they want signed to actually appear on Impact or for Impact to actually listen to them, they're going to take a little more interest saying, hey, we might see the next Impact star on this show. And they did do that with, I think it's the Road for Glory show when they signed AC Romero. They actually did put that out on social media. You never know, we might sign someone. And when they signed AC Romero and said he was going to be bound for glory, that was a, a buzzworthy thing. And that's where I, that's what goes back to good marketing because that was a good marketing move. If you just say we're signing AC Romero, who cares? But if you make it feel like, hey, we're going to sign someone from the show, you end up signing AC Romero, you put the signing on social media, and then he's at Bound for Glory, well, yeah, it fucking matters. And even the way they did it with Larry D was a little bit better. Not not than the AC Romero, but I mean, better than the way they normally sign people where they just show up on the show with no kind of build whatsoever. But if we feel, as fans, that they may sign someone every third, fourth, fifth, sixth show, whatever, just, just sprinkle it in there, then we might have more invested interest in watching to see who that person is. But Impact fans are telling you the people we want to see, the people we want to be signed. Impact right now is just signing who they want to. They're not quite listening to the people. Number seven, build angles on YouTube. You have the YouTube platform to do whatever you want with. And currently, YouTube is the biggest weakness I'll say it's the biggest weakness right now with Impact Wrestling because aside from the television program, that's their number two biggest platform and they're not targeting new fans of the company or the current fans of the company. They're targeting people who want to see old matches and who care about the highlights, which the hardcore fans have already seen the matches and don't care about the highlights and that's all we get content-wise on YouTube. When you have talent in town and you're filming your backstage segments and everything, build a couple angles and post the shit on YouTube. It's very simple. It's a very easy concept. And a few months ago, when they were doing RBD versus Rhino, they actually did do a small build and it would say, hey, they're gonna fight on Impact Plus. So they're not, it's, they're not foreign to this concept, but more needs to be built 
on TV for these shows, but use, use YouTube, folks. It's right there for you. If you don't have the TV time to promote these shows, utilize YouTube and just build little storylines. You have no problem rushing a storyline between Moose and Rhino with a backstage segment and putting it on the hard to kill pay-per-view. Shit, I will take something that small and rushed, but on YouTube, to build the damn shows. And the funny part is you're making money every time someone watches one of your videos. So not only can you promote with YouTube, but you're also monetizing it and making extra money in the process. Number eight, merchandise giveaways, t-shirt giveaways. This is something you can announce on television and you can do it on your beloved social channels as well. But for the Twitch shows, this is, this is kind of Twitch specific because there's Twitch chats. Giveaway t-shirts, giveaway merchandise. Let people know ahead of time that we are gonna be giving away Shop Impact merchandise to people in the Twitch chat. I don't mean we're just gonna give away shirts to everybody. But while we're watching these shows, you can actually run little contests within the chat and get people involved. And then if you put it out during the show on Twitter, on your social channels, we're doing a contest right now over at Twitch while this show is on. And the winner is going to get a free Hard to Kill shirt, free Eddie Edwards shirt, free whatever you want to give them. Tessa Blanchard shirt, whatever it is. But incentivize because people love to get free shit so bounce people from social media over to twitch from tv over to twitch but why why should they care because twitch is just a show well we're also giving something away we're doing a giveaway we have someone from impact wrestling in the in the chat make it a wrestler whoever re if it's eddie edwards and he's giving away you're giving away an eddie edwards shirt have eddie get in the chat Number nine, build the main events on television. I said this just a little while ago with RVD and Rhino where they actually did build a little bit of an angle on TV. They don't normally do that. But if you're gonna have a main event for the show, build it, build that on TV. Because a lot of times you have matches that mean absolutely nothing. And there is dead space throughout the show. And they've been doing a lot of backstage segments in between matches. It's always a format that's match, backstage, backstage segment, match, backstage segment. That's a little difficult to say. Replace one of those backstage segments at one point with something that's actually building towards something. And you have the dead space to do it with. Just for a couple weeks, build the main event. You can take one week if you want to build a Twitch main event and the other to build an Impact Plus main event. And you don't even have to overthink it. As I said earlier, you rushed hard to kill matches, pay-per-view card matches. So as a, at a minimum, you can give us something like that to build the main events for these shows and to keep it in people's minds. All right, and number 10, and I'm telling you folks, this is the doozy, this is what's gonna do it. Bring back old themed TNA pay-per-views. Now, what do I mean by that? So Impact Wrestling on YouTube just hit 3 million subscribers and they celebrated by posting Destination X from whatever year it was. I think it was 2009. I might be pulling that number out of my ass. How do you follow that up, Impact Wrestling? This is this is social media marketing 101 here. You drop something like that because people actually genuinely, when they did that, went and watched the show. There was a lot of people, okay, cool. I complain about the old stuff all the time, but they did a good job with that. Hey, we're giving you Destination X, a pay-per-view people like, a show people like. But then how do you follow that up? With nothing. With absolutely nothing. What if you follow that shit up with an announcement a day or two later that Destination X is coming to Twitch, Knockouts Knockdown is coming to Impact Plus, or what if fucking Lockdown was coming to Impact Plus or Twitch? You don't want to use that as a pay-per-view. People have been telling you they want Lockdown for a pay-per-view. They have saying this for two years and they're not getting it. But what if Lockdown was an Impact Plus or Twitch show? What if you brought back Knockouts Knockdown, Destination X, the shows that people want to see, the ones they miss, the ones they love? Would that not make you turn in, tune in? If you got to see Lockdown, fucking Lockdown? Impact Wrestling is doing a much better job with the Twitch and Impact Plus shows than they had previously been doing. At first, they were complete train wrecks, and I'll give credit where credit's due. There's a lot of improvement, and I hope they continue to improve. 
hope you enjoyed this upload. This is just 10 more ways that I would fix the Impact Plus and Twitch monthly specials.